The views expressed on this podcast are that of the host. This topic of UFOs is full of governments, charlatans, thieves, and loads of shit. For your listening enjoyment, put on your tinfoil hat, turn off all the lights in the home, and sit in complete silence because the probe is armed. Don't be scared if you're touched. Lastly, the UFO talk is explicit and your virgin mind is about to get fried. Let's get the show started. This is the Tempest Universe. Welcome to the Monday, Tuesday edition of the uh, Tempest Universe. Uh, for those of you go, let me start over. I've had a bit too much of uh, the Monday vodka on Tuesday. For those of you who uh, have not tuned in in a while, of course, this past weekend is Labor Day weekend here in the U.S. of A. So uh, I took a trip down to SpaceX down in Boca Chica. And uh, I got tons of videos and pictures. So I got to figure out how to share that. Because uh, I have no fucking clue. And the weird thing is that some of these are shot in 4K. And so you you end up with like 10 gigabytes of video. And it's only like 3 minutes. <laughs> it's just crazy how that works. I am your host Manny. And I have stuff to talk about with you. We got show stuff. But uh, in regards to SpaceX before I, I leave that topic. Holy shit. That place has grown so much. They've built so many things, and as much as um, they talk about Starship number 20, SN20, there's like three of those damn things laying around uh, built out there. And, and of course you got the uh, the Super Heavy, which I like to call um, the BFE rocket. That's where you're going to end up if shit goes wrong. Uh, that's out there too. And, uh, and the weird thing too is like when you're driving up, you can see... The uh, little arms on the tower are just supposed to catch these things when they come down. I just, I don't know. Like, that's like, you know, being a caveman and jumping towards the T-Rex hoping he catches you. He's not going to catch you. He's not. He's going to eat you after you hit the ground and you're fucking shattered. But anyway, uh, so we'll, we'll see. Maybe I can, uh, maybe we'll do like a live video this weekend. Uh, play the video, show some of the pictures, you know, kind of chew the fat, maybe have some drunken history again. Who knows what's going to happen? Like, it just happens. I can't. I have no control anymore. It's all lost. It's all, it's all fucking lost. Like, the mic is super hot right now. I don't know why. Now, before I get started, so we got four articles to talk about, but there is one thing that uh, I've been struggling with, right? So we've got this UFO, you know, documentary thing, series that's on Showtime, Hey, you know, I've been thinking about, well, should I subscribe to Showtime so I can kind of see these? Because the first episode was free on YouTube. You know, Showtime's trying to entice people to go over there and watch it. Fantastic. I've, I see nothing wrong with that. And it was a pretty good episode. Now, I guess they're up to episode number four. It came out recently, I guess. I don't even know when they come out. But this one was uh, Richard Doty. He was on this one. And so Richard is talking about a UFO crash, and I hope, spoiler alert, I don't have a sound effect, let me just use Elon. Elon, can you let him know it's a spoiler alert? I never heard of. They speak English and what? Anyway, spoiler alert. So it turns out that um, Richard Doty on this episode is talking about a, a New Mexico crash. Not just one, but two. One in, uh, what is it, Corona? Like where they make the beer? Who knows? Uh, Corona, New Mexico, and then there was, uh, well, two UFOs basically collided in 1947. One in crash in Corona, the other one crashed on the west end of uh, Magdalena, New Mexico, and it wasn't found until two years later. But apparently the ship, according to Al Doty, according to, to him, the ship that landed in Corona had a pilot. That was it's got to be one blind-ass fucking alien 
a pilot there for him to crash into a UFO. Do you know how many things were not flying over the U.S., over New Mexico uh, in 1947? How the fuck do you crash into another UFO? This is why I don't get these Like, these stories, while they may be amazing, that makes no fucking sense to me. It really doesn't. Anyway, so these, these two alien dingbats they crash into each other. The one that gets recovered, according to Dowdy, because fuck knows, he knows everything, one of them was uh, shipped over, the pilot that was still alive after this crash, he was shipped over to um, uh, Los Alamos, because everybody fucking works there, so why not put a fucking UFO alien in there, for fuck's sake. And so he's over to, uh, over to Los Alamos, right? And uh, so he lived, and they gave him a name. And he, he's also male, apparently, according to Dodi. How the fuck does he know all these things? I don't get it. So he says, oh, Dodi, that the uh, the name of this male alien was Eva. E-V-A. <sighs> uh, Eva, L. Eva, gotta, you know, make sure it's we know it's a male, uh, died in 1952, according to Richard Dodi. But here's a quote. Here's a quote from Dodi from this... Uh, Episode 4. Uh, but during that time period that he was with us, quote unquote us, who the fuck is us? He told us a plethora of information of what they have learned about the universe and what their technology is. Their technology is probably estimated to be about 50,000 years ahead of us. I don't understand how Richard Doty is telling the story. This makes no sense to me. Like, in a way, I want to know more about this story, so I might have to do some research. This this article came up about the episode while I was looking for uh, a particular tidbit of information about something else. And I was like, geez louise. I mean, Richard Doty does not look, uh, what, a year over 203. I mean, it could be that he was there getting information from Eva. I don't know. But this is the thing that really bugs me about, you know, these guys. These, uh, I don't know, the UFO gods, as I call them, the ufology gods. Is that he doesn't have a shred of fucking uh, evidence whatsoever. Like, I can make up shit now, too, you know? Like, there's an alien crashed in uh, 1963 named Boom Boom. And uh, he, he crashed into another UFO, and it took out a... Uh, presidential uh, vehicle and then him and the president became friends. So when they went to the White House, they had, where, where he stayed at now, it's called the Boom Boom Room. Like, I don't know. You don't, I don't understand how they have so much information, especially something like this. You're literally talking about two crash UFOs, dumb as fuck, no autopilot. One of them survives. He ends up at Los Alamos, tells, tells us all these things, with a single, not a single, not a bit of evidence, but we're going to go around to uh, documentaries and probably a whole lot of fucking um, UFO conferences just to tell people this happened with, with nothing. I just, it bugs me. I, in a way, I feel like watching it because maybe I'm missing something. Maybe maybe this article really didn't do old, old Richie Doty justice in the story so I don't know well, well, I have to look more into this maybe we'll talk about it tomorrow about this whole uh, Corona and funny the fucking place is near Corona uh, Corona and Magdalena New Mexico issue with the bad oil pilot uh, so we got four articles to talk about today so it should be quite uh, fascinating uh, especially for you guys that have $125,000 laying around some of you that don't know how to count, you can probably relate to the story that we have on the Department of, of Justice, because shit happens. Um, Michio Kaku is back again. <laughs> oh boy, come on Michio, stop it. And uh, SpaceX has a big deal going down in about a week. So, uh, as I say, today is Vodka Day, so uh, you know I want to get everyone in the mood, because for many of us, today is our Monday, so you guys should know this by heart already. It's my damn anthem. I don't give a damn. I don't really care about you and your problems. I don't give a damn. You talk way too much. I have heard enough about you and your problems. I don't give a damn.
wanna be, you wanna be, you wanna be with me You wanna feel, feel something real, but I'm feeling differently You're making plans to get to friends, but don't wanna face the fact That I ain't got time, I ain't got time, I ain't got time for that Staying up late, sleeping all day, dreaming about Cadillacs Buying new shoes, hanging by the pool, sipping on Coke and Jack Calling my phone when you feel alone, but I'll never call you back I don't give a damn, I don't really care About you and your problems, I don't give a damn You talk way too much, I have heard enough About you and your problems, I don't give a damn I think about it you know, what it says about like maybe two years ago and it was actually during year for Buster Radio where we talked about this company that was going to fill up a, a humongous ass fucking weather balloon and he's going to dangle a shitload of people from it and they were going to glide slowly and surely they would rise up it would rise up into suborbital space and then um you know, come back and down again. Uh, you know, but at the time that when they talked about this, I, there wasn't so much of um, of the down part. We really didn't know. Well, fuck, we really don't know how it's gonna come down now. Anyway, yeah, I'm sure they got to let the air out. Uh, and, and then it, it's just a weird thing. Uh, the company, which um, apparently had a test this uh, recent, uh, as, as as recent as June of this year, uh, amid all the COVID craziness. Um, space perspective actually has a uh, a successful test of the uh, balloon with the fancy looking gondola or gondola depends where you're from uh, spaceship Neptune and they did it and the moment that they successfully did this this test guess what they started selling fucking tickets they're not even playing the uh, co-founder of space perspective. Jane Pointer. Here comes Bugs. He's like trying to get up the stairs right now. If you're looking for the fury and vibration of a rocket, I don't know what's up with her. Those kind of things we shouldn't talk about. Uh, you've come to the wrong place, according to her. Space Neptune is going to offer a gentle ride into space that lets clients absorb the astronaut experience. I mean, I think it's wonderful. I love it. Now, the actual balloon, all together, it's going to be the size of a damn football field. It's a big-ass balloon. On top of that, the cabin and the whole package, the whole thing, it's actually going to take a really long damn time to get to where it needs to go. Um, it, it's actually going to float at 12 miles per hour to reach a height of a total of 100 thousand miles in the air. Isn't that crazy? That is... I'm sorry, not miles, it's feet. 100,000 feet. Uh, it's just completely nuts. 
but what these guys are saying is you're not uh, you're not exactly going to be in space. You you're not. You're kind of going to be like um, uh, Richard Branson's crew. You're not <laughs> you're not really going to be labeled an astronaut. I'm sorry, but we already know if you ain't doing astronaut shit anyway, they're not going to give you the title. But you're in the steady climb. You're going to have a luxurious, you know, place to sit. You know, 360 view. You get to have some alcohol, have some dinner. Got to be a total of eight passengers. And of course, the captain. They don't say there's a crew, so, you know, if shit goes wrong, you only got the captain to blame for shit. But, um, yeah, so it's a very slow climb. You'll have Wi-Fi. You'll have some really nice accoutrements, as they say. Uh, recliners. I'm telling you, it's supposed to be really nice. Now, you will gradually leave Candy Space Center on the uh, spaceship Neptune. And um, you uh, you pretty much will come to a stop somewhere over the Florida Peninsula. And then you go over the East Coast and then, shit, you drop, you drop back down to the planet. Now, the entire length of the ride, it doesn't really say. And I actually went to the website for Space uh, Perspective. But it didn't give you um, too much in that uh, avenue of length of time. But there is a nice diagram which shows you leaving Florida and ending up in the water. So yeah, you will touch down in the Atlantic. And there will be a ship somewhere to uh, pick you up and bring you back. Now, we know these things are not cheap. This is going to set you back... $125,000 $125,000 per seat. So if you got a family of four, that's a, that's a lot of money. That's a half million dollars. Family of eight, you should have thought about protection. Because that's a million dollars. You can always sell them off one by one to pay for the other seats. One $125,000, and actually the first flights are going to be um, taking off in 2024. Now, like I said, in June, as soon as they got back and um, they got to go, they started selling flights. So I would imagine that you probably won't be able to get seating in 2024, especially if it's uh, like an a, a passenger ride and then the additional captain. But for fuck's sake, if you got the money... Is this something that you would like to partake of? Would you want to be in this 100,000 foot climb into not space? Now they say you're going you're to be high enough. For those of you who are flat earthers, let me just speak to you for a second. The flat earth community should get together, vote a president in and a vice president, give them a little turtle pin to wear to identify themselves, can buy them a ticket on this fucking balloon. Like I say this all the time, you can get on the Crew Dragon. You can get on, you know, uh, Galactica, Galactica, whatever the fuck. (laughs) You can get on uh, Virgin Galactus uh, uh, deal. You might be able to get on the the top of the, the phallus for Blue Origin. With the right, around, uh, right amount of money. But if you can't afford those guys, 125000 on this balloon to figure out if the Earth has a curvature to it to where it looks like a globe. Flat earthers need to vote in a president, give him some money, 125k, even pay for a vice president, 250 There's enough flat earthers out there to be able to afford this if y'all just get all your lazy asses together and send in some money I'll tell you you guys will have your answers Yeah, within the next 10 years we're going to have the answers to whether the planet is, is flat or not so y'all you guys got time to get that shit together and find yourself a flat earther president I'm just I'm being honest with you stop, stop fucking around that's, uh, there's a little more to the article, especially about the actual uh, Spaceship Neptune ship itself. The image that's on for this podcast right now 
It's kind of like a, a graphic uh, representation of Spaceship Neptune. So check that out. Uh, you can also go to the website for the company, Space Perspective, and get a little bit more info there if you want to. But if you want to have a not-astronaut experience, but uh, be sucking down on some champagne while you figure out if we are sitting on a turtle or not, 125K will get you there. Maybe they'll give discounts by then. Who, who fucking knows? Um, now, today is Vodka Day. So, because I also had a really good time in South Padre this weekend, sucking down margaritas and uh, beers, why not play this? Bueno, sí. By the way, this weekend I was down in South Padre. We took uh, Bugs the UFO Hunter with us. <laughs> He's a Boston Terrier. But for fuck's sake, I had no idea he was such a prima donna. Now, I will say this. Hey, we even got him a damn wagon, like a red wagon to, to you know, take him around the places. Because we figure it's going to be hot. Concrete's hot. We take care of our boy, right? But, oh, my God. Oh, my God. What a drama queen. Like, literally... The heat was just way too much for him. He was a, he was more than just panting. He was like passing out, drooling saliva, and then licking it back up. It's so disgusting, Bugs. Finally, he had to stick him in a damn room with AC, and that's where he stayed. He stayed the whole time. We couldn't even bring him out. Like we took him out to take a poop, and it, for fuck's sake, he, he he was having a heat stroke. This this is what happens when you have a prima donna for a dog. This this is what goes down. Jeez, Louise. I know last week we had a uh, article with the same uh, renowned theoretical physicist Michio Kaku. Or you don't know, you know, I've got a New York accent, and sometimes it comes out right. And uh, so the, the K-A really comes out like K-O, so I feel like I'm saying Kaku or Kakku. So I don't know if you'd be offended by that, but anyway. Uh, Micho says, keep an open mind. 
Like he's he's talking to the scientists of the world. Keep an open mind because alias, this is a real thing. He actually predicted at one time that aliens would make themselves known within this century. He said that. Like, no fucks are given. He says, yes, this will happen. But he says this, imagine if the aliens are uh, are millions of years more advanced than us. Not the 50,000 that Richard Doty is talking about. I mean, 50, who, really, Doty? You haven't met Michukaku. He says millions. Take your 50,000, take a hike. He says, imagine if these aliens were millions of years more advanced than us. They literally would have gone through new forms of physics. So keep an open mind, you primitive fuckers. I'm, I'm helping you out, Kaku. But you, you know, he's right. We're talking about, you know, several hundred billions of years, and there literally could be one or two million years separating us from, you know, the nearest civilization, wherever the hell that is, 4.2 far or not. But Kaku also says that uh, besides them keeping an open mind, stop fucking advertising that we're here. What the hell is wrong with you guys? You, you got both sides, right? You got the sides of people that's like, oh, nope, I'm not dealing with that. That's bullshit. Give me my atoms, give me my isotopes and my molecular uh, uh, instruments. I, I, That's what I deal with. You know, and, and, and then you got the other guys like, let's send them messages. Woo! You know, and they send like naked photos. And messages of peace together all in the same, you know, stream of data. Zeros and ones. But he's saying no, maybe maybe advertising that we're here is not such a good thing because you might just might get the wrong one. You know, you hear that all the time. You got the wrong one today? Yeah. That could happen to it. Actually back in an interview they had with Stephen Colbert back in April, he says, it's a bad idea to advertise our existence because you never know who the fuck is going to get here. And then he gave this example, right? Look at what happened to Cortez and Montezuma. Montezuma in Mexico made a huge mistake, right? Because, you know, he assumed and you know what happens when you assume you make an ass out of you and me he assumed Cortez was a god. But Cortez was just a pirate. All he wanted was to take at any way possible, using any means. But on top of that, the fucker was carrying smallpox, so (laughs) there you go. What else can you do? Here is what he's saying. It's like, you guys want to be sending messages, just shut the fuck up. Don't send anything. Just chill out and observe keep on experimenting uh, with uh, maybe some faster travel because we're slow as fuck when it comes to space travel but just don't do it don't advertise to them that we're here because we might not uh, get the good guys let's be honest this is one of my problems with uh, this lady Anjali or whatever the hell her name is talking all you know peace love and happiness Uh, E.T.'s here because we're fucking up the planet and they want to stop it. No, don't go back to your fucking planet. You want to stop shit? Go to your planet. Stop. Oh my god, it just makes me mad. But you know, the universe is significant in size. There's just no way that everyone in the universe, the universal community, is all gun drops and jelly beans. There's got to be some fuckers out there that bleed acid. And with our luck. With our savvy and scientific know-how, we will send the wrong message to the wrong alien. And then we're fucked. Now, the other thing is, we see all these fantastic UFO uh, abduction stories and cattle mutilations and all these things. If these are all the good aliens, we're really screwed. If all the good aliens are probing us, coming in through interdimensional portals into our homes... And taking us off dressed like cat ladies, we're in trouble. Let's be just let's be honest about that. If all of our cattle is being uh, debutted, 
with lasers and also gut it with lasers, then where are, who the fuck are the bad guys? What the bad guys? I mean, I, I don't even want to know what the bad guys are going to do at this point because these good guys, they give no fucks. So I'm just saying, I'm with Michio Kaku on this one. Shut the fuck up. There's no need to announce uh, that we're here, especially with a, a civilization that could be millions of years in advance. I, I just agree with him, totally. Uh, but he says, you know, keep an open mind as a scientist because um, it is a legitimate scientific question to ask as far as what are all these UFO sightings, where do they come from, and could they possibly originate from somewhere else? He also says that many of the scientists today, the reason why they're skeptical is because the stars are so far away from each other. And so most of these uh, scientists, these physicists, they only estimate that aliens could only be about a century ahead of us. And there goes the problem. But if you have aliens that um, have faulty autopilot that crash into each other in New Mexico, <laughs> they might be right. These guys are dumb as fuck. We might be okay. There's more to the article regarding what uh, Micho Kaku had to say about aliens and about keeping an open mind. And, and just, you know, just understand that that same alien that wants to offer peace and happiness in the Mojave probably has a cave somewhere filled of fresh new probes to go butt wild with. Eh. We might just have to take a chance. I met you at the wrong time Then you caught me on that one night Girl, I wanna know How this thing get out of my controls Zip line into your timeline Hey, that body don't lie I didn't care for the hype Yeah, but when I saw you tonight Ooh, girl You know just what you doing I'll go a thousand miles To show you that I'm right For your love Hey, keep breaking necks when you passing them by Make sure they know that you take and love in your vibe Let's be forever tonight And I will let you make up your mind But I can't wait When you coming over Let me be your chauffeur When you came through that door, yeah Glowing like a headlight Independent all the way, got her bread right, yeah Hard to ignore Sexy body, make a jaw hit the floor Won't you come over now? Just let me hold you down Nothing else matching your type Nothing else matching your type, yeah Oh, I feel the magic in the air And when you get Give me a taste, I swear When you give me a taste Let me take it over Drive it like a chauffeur I won't let you make up your mind But I can't wait When you coming over Let me be a chauffeur
mercy on my soul. This next article, <laughs> oh my God. Um, it really is a circus, to be honest. So we've been talking about it a few weeks now, about, you know, Blue Origin and Jeff Bozo uh, screwing around with uh, SpaceX I, at all levels. They're, they're, not, they're not leaving anything untouched. Like, literally, there's, you know, every time Elon, you know, looks online or looks on Twitter, <laughs> you know, Jeff Bezos is screwing with him in some way. The Ninja Turtles on fire. But we know Blue Origin specifically is suing NASA and SpaceX uh, because they, they want a piece of the pie too. You know, they want to at least be considered for a side mission, like a sci-ho for, you know, the Artemis missions. You know, get your sci-ho over here. Come on. Come on, girl. Come on. You know, come get this rocket. That's the problem right now. So Blue Origin feels everything's unfair. They're just crying like babies. And so now they want to go, uh, you know, uh, litigation happy now. So here's the funny thing. Is that the Department of Justice, the lawyers, the Depart- Department of Justice, that means we pay for this. People in the United States, your taxes pay for the Department of Justice lawyers. And, and on Friday, they asked for an extension of four days. Yeah. Now you know. Listen, they're lawyers. They want you know. They want to get in there, and they want to make sure they got their shit together, right? Apparently, someone, someone actually, uh, but could not number all the pages for all the documents. There are seventeen hundred pages, and for fuck's sake, some nitwit could not number them things starting from number one. They literally asked for four fucking days <laughs> to paginate, to put numbers on the documents, one through 1,700. The fact that they did that is one thing, but the fact that they asked for four fucking days to do that is, is unbelievable. It is so crazy right now that um, Adobe Acrobat actually uh, put out a statement saying, oh, we're sorry. Yeah, we're trying to help them, you know. We're trying to help the the DOJ with the counting. Um, you, you know, our program really does handle really large files, uh, 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 but um, we regrettably um, we we hate that it's created such a challenge for the DOJ. So 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 we're helping them now. What the fuck is going on? I mean, this is this is what we deal with. You know, if if it wasn't bad enough that uh, Jeff Bozo and the gang were really screwing with uh, SpaceX enough and NASA too, to be honest, and the whole Artemis mission, but <laughs> the fact that DOJ can't number fucking documents from one to seventeen hundred, that is just a slap in the nads, to be honest. Uh, I I can't believe this. Now, prior to this, about a week ago, um, they actually asked for a one week extension saying that they were having uh, difficulty getting 7 gigabytes of case documents into a format that could be shared with the parties. Yeah. So, so they needed a fucking week to transfer the documents to a DVD. Who the fuck writes this stuff? What, what, who, I'm telling you, who the hell... Uh, uh, who's at the DOJ? Hey, 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 you with the red nose! Uh, 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 can you come over here and help me? Hey, hey. This is just stupid. I mean, I, I know. This is, I, I just don't even know what to say anymore. This is actually shit that's happening. This is the stuff that's going on. And the fact that Adobe Acrobat, uh, the company had to get in there to save the DOJ uh, because of the fucking uh, numbering of the documents, it's just freaking ridiculous. So what they're going to do, right... Um, what they're going to do is that now, because you know the file is uh, twice as large with no numbering of the pages, they're going to send out a uh, a copy of the documents to all parties, not numbered. But we're gonna wait four fucking days in order to number this shit one to seventeen hundred, and then the case can continue. Yeah, what in the hell is going on? I I don't understand. This makes no damn sense. 
So the Artemis mission and everything tied to it is on pause while we learn how to number pages at the Department of Justice. And um, the moon's going to have to wait. So is uh, SpaceX because I, I swear to you, I'm telling you, Jeff Bozo, he's got his fingers in people like a like a puppeteer. And some of them love it. Some of them love it. Uh, you know, just off uh, off topic here, but uh, while I was at SpaceX, I saw a lot of uh, great environment. No environmental concerns for me. But uh, the great master puppeteer apparently has the the environmental folks, you know, tickled pink. With his fingers doing all the work. While they continue to put out articles regarding how the environment is going to shit down in Boca Chica. I mean, I didn't, I didn't see any of that. I uh, didn't experience it. There was birds everywhere. You know, lots of bugs. For fuck's sake, is there a lot of bugs? you got to be kidding me. And, and people were still going down to the shore at uh, Boca Chica Beach, which is right on the other side of where they have, uh, down the street from the hopper, the uh, flying trash can, R2-D2, you know, the first one that made the hop. So I don't know, man. Uh, Jeff Bezos is literally winning his war on everybody. Everybody and everything. He's got a war with Starlink. He's got a war going on with Tesla. I mean, for fuck's sake, really. Imagine if he was still running Amazon. We'd be, we'd be screwed. We would be screwed. We'd be getting sued for our Prime membership because we want too much. I don't know. This is the craziness that's happening right now. Uh, So we'll see if they were able to number those pages because, you know, it's hard life. You know, you get paid six figures and you can't fucking number pages. Uh, Check out the article. It's in the description. If you want to get frustrated like I do, that's the perfect place to start.
last bit of news before we uh, call it a night. But I'll be back tomorrow. Same time, same place, hopefully. <laughs> Unless something goes seriously wrong. Um, SpaceX has a mission coming up, and it is all civilian crew. There's not going to be any 500-year-old ladies on there. There's not, you know, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. We're going to have a totally different staff of phallus to go up to the uh, middle of nowhere September the 15th. That's what's going down. So this uh, SpaceX mission is called Inspirational 4. It is all civilian crew. And uh, they just recently passed their physical and stuff. Uh, they did some testing also. Uh, and so this thing is going up. On top of a uh, space, uh, a Falcon 9 rocket, you're going to have that crew dragon up there. And uh, it's going to be exciting, right? Here, finally, we get to have all of these guys. The the people, basically. Your civilians go up there and, and enjoy uh, this thing. Now, of course, they're not a regular fucking people, right? Because, you know, everyone's got to have a millionaire on, on their shit. Uh, somebody has got to send the rich people up because it, it's a sell, right? Uh, so, the first one is a billionaire entrepreneur... He's going to be the mission commander, Jared Isaacman. Uh, after that, we have a geoscientist and science communicator, Sean Proctor. So that should be exciting. Also on board, we have a physician assistant, a PA. Come on, not even a doctor, a PA. That's pretty normal. Haley, uh, the name is not. Yeah, her last name is not normal. Uh, Acerno? Arsino? Who fucking knows? Okay, Haley, please change your name. You're PA. You can afford it. Uh, she'll be serving as the chief medical officer. And then we have a data engineer named Chris Sembroski. The Broski Nader is a mission specialist. Whatever the fuck they do, who knows? Now, the funny thing is, is everyone got a title. It's not like uh, old uh, Jeff Bozo and his his folks, you know, they didn't have no title. They were just like looky loos. These guys have titles. So they may. If they pass that Carmen line, they may just become astronauts. Let's just be clear on that. Now, Jeff Bozo's probably going to sue everybody about that, too. He's going to be all upset about it. Now, the purpose for the mission is to raise money and also awareness for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. For the, you know, I, I don't know if St. Jude's is everywhere, uh, but fuck, they do a lot of stuff with children. Uh, I remember there's a couple of uh, events that I was in, involved with outside of the podcast world, but in my personal life for St. Jude's. So, you know, they do a lot of good work. There's a lot of research that happens there uh, to fight things like cancer. Cancer in children is one of the saddest things ever. So a uh, fantastic reason to send up all these civilians and to hopefully, you know, uh, raise that those funds for these uh, these kiddos. Uh, so flight readiness completed uh, last Thursday so uh, the mission is a go on the 15th we don't have a time for when the uh, the crew dragon will take off but it will be taking off from Kennedy Space Center in Florida and it will be leaving launch complex 39A and uh, touching down after three days splashing down in the Atlantic Ocean. I hope these guys get along. Because that's a uh, long as fucking time. To be in with uh, three other strangers. In the middle of fucking nowhere in space. Like somebody's going to go down. For sure. Now I'm I'm pretty sure that this thing is going to be up there. And we're going to have uh, four new astronauts. And you know. Listen Jeff. You fucked up. You fucked up. You should have passed the Carmen line. Like a good rocketeer. But you didn't. You let all your people down. So it looks like SpaceX will not. They're going to produce some astronauts. So don't start suing people about it. Don't sue NASA. Don't sue SpaceX. You know, don't blame any of the people on your shitty rocket that didn't make it past the line. Just accept it. You fucked up again. Please, give your lawyers a break. And plus the DOJ can't take it anymore. One more fucking page and the whole system's broken. Those are the uh, articles for today. They're all, they're all linked in the description. So if you think I'm making this shit up, <laughs> go look. 
Click it. Read it. It's true. Tomorrow, I'm going to find out. I'm telling you, I'm going to find out more about this uh, test pilot nonsense, you know, that uh, Richard Doty was talking about with those two fucking UFOs crashed into each other. <sighs> and the whole evil nonsense. I, I'm just uh, I'm just not happy about it. I don't, I'm not happy about uh, Doty talking shit like that. It just, But he might be right. I don't know. I don't know. This is the end of the podcast. I thank you guys for listening. Don't forget to do one thing. Share, like, follow, talk, chat it up. I mean, if you're in Australia, there's some parts of the country you can't go no fucking where. Send somebody a text message and say, hey, since you're sitting around the shitter because you can't go outside because of COVID, please listen to Manny. And um, he'll surely burn many of your brain cells. I mean, what else you got to do for fuck's sake, mate? Ciao.
this asshole.